Hi, everyone. Oh, this is a bit very loud, maybe. So my name is Varya, and um, today I want to make an introduction into Apache Airflow. Um, I want to say that this presentation is aimed for beginners, somebody who maybe heard about Airflow but never used that. Uh, so let's start. Uh, what is the what what's Airflow? Airflow, you can think of it as a tool to build, schedule, and monitor data pipelines. Build means to create. Schedule means to set a specific time when the workflow should start. And monitor means to be able to check how your workflow is going, which task failed, which succeeded, uh, why they failed, for example. Let's also define what's the data pipeline. Data pipeline is the set of data processing elements connected in series where the output of one element is the input to the next one. Imagine you have some data, you put it into the data processing element, simply put function, and you get transformed output that you can put into the next function and so on. So today we're going to build very simple data pipeline. So um, it's going to be a toy example, uh, but I believe it will help us to understand and to learn main concepts of Airflow. And uh, so the project for today is the following. So imagine you are very interested in some Python library, let's say Pandas. For those who don't know, Pandas is a data analysis and modeling library. So you're very interested in that and you want to stay up to date. And you think, oh, maybe if I know what people with good, with, with good reputation on Stack Overflow ask about Pandas, then uh, it will give me a good overview. So you decide to automate this process and um, get fresh questions from Stack Overflow every day to your mailbox. So let's see how, how, how we might make a data pipeline of this project. Um, so the first task was be, would be to create a table, just Postgres table where we will store raw questions. The next step will be to actually get data from Stack Overflow uh, and in a raw format for one day, store it in this table. Then we will filter this data to select only good questions, only interested one, interesting one, and store them as JSON in S3. Okay. The fourth uh, task will be to take data from S3 and render HTML template with this data that eventually we're going to send this email. And it's supposed to run every day without us touching it. Okay, so now we know what we want to build. Let's see what tools do we have in our disposal, like what Airflow can um, can offer us. It's called uh, main concepts of Airflow. You, Some people say it's building blocks of Airflow. And there are seven of them that we're going to learn today and um, use in, uh, in our code. So uh, the first one, the very first concept is operator. You can think of it just like a worker, something that knows how to perform a task and has all the tools to make it, right? For example, uh, specific for Airflow, you can have Python operator. It knows how to run Python code. Uh, Postgres operator knows how to connect to Postgres database and run SQL queries there. Bash operator knows how to run bash commands, etc. right? So the second main important concept is DAG. It states for directed acyclic graph, but uh, it's just protocol. It's just like set of instructions where you define which task should follow which one, what to do if one task failing, uh, how many times you want to retry, things like that, right? Um, next concept is task itself, its job performed by the operator. The fourth one is important, it's connection. Connection is secrets or credentials to external, uh, external systems. For example, Postgres connection would consist of ports, um, a host, uh, user, passwords, right? And it all can be stored in the Airflow database securely, right? 
Uh, so you don't need to worry about how to, how to securely get it there. Uh, next it's hooks. Hooks, it's, it are very, very useful, I think, because they, um, they give us, uh, common interface for this external services, right? Because uh, if you need to connect to Postgres, you would normally use some external library like PsychoPG or something. But here you can just use a hook, provide connection that you stored in the Airflow and uh, run your queries. And S, uh, for example, S3 hook should look very similar to Postgres hook, just with different connection and parameters. Fine. So, um, one more concept is variables. Super simple. It's just like environmental variables. Any arbitrary chunks of data that you might need to store. And the very last one is XCOM. XCOM stays for, um, cross communication between tasks. And if you follow the best practices of, uh, building workflows, your task should be independent or idempotent. They should not share any state, but sometimes you need to share a little bit of data between tasks. Uh, and XCOM, uh, is the tool to do that. And we, you, you will see today how, how, how one might use it. Okay. So now we have our goal, right? The pipeline we want to build and we have the tools uh, that Airflow provides. Let's just go and we can go start building the pipeline. And the first thing like that you need usually is to install everything and have it deployed somewhere. But all this is out of scope of this presentation. But in the Git repository that I provided in the beginning, you can find some links to get, that can help you get started. But let's just imagine we have everything installed. And the first thing I do before building the pipeline is usually store those connections and variables that I already know in Airflow UI. I have a small demo for you to show how it might look like. Hopefully, fully internet's working fine. So here is just like we, I'm starting the web server locally. Um, so since it's local, I can go to my local host. And this is how the UI looks like. In the admin tab, you have connections and variables. Let's check the variables. I already created them. You see S3 bucket, stack overflow ID, secret, and the tag. So let's change it to pandas. Um, this is how, so remember all these variables, we will need them. And also connections. For this uh, project, we need two connections, Postgres connection and S3 connection. Here you can see how, how it looks, which parameter it takes. Um, and yeah, we saved. Cool. So this is, uh, all we need for now. Uh, so let's go and step by step implement the pipeline. Okay. Remember the first task is to create questions table for that. We will need Postgres connection because we need to create table in this database and Postgres operator. It, this operator knows how to, uh, how to, how to work with this database. Um, and here I prepared like a, some code. I hope you can see it. So, um, all the, uh, all important, uh, um, imports are done. And this is how we usually, uh, instantiate a DAG, our instructions. Um, you need to give it a, an ID and also default arguments. So maybe the most interesting argument is like the schedule interval. How often do you want to run it? Here I say daily. You can say weekly, hourly, or use cron syntax. Uh, so let's go and implement our first task. As you see, it's using a uh, Postgres operator. It ha it should have ID, um, ID. And I just use a uh, Postgres connection here. Remember, we created this in the UI. And since it knows how to run SQL, we need to provide SQL query here. Just create a table. Very nice. Our first task is ready. 
So the second task is to store that we take data from Airflow, uh, from Stack Overflow API, and we will store it in, in, in this table. For this, we will again need Postgres connection variables, uh, and, uh, Python operator because we will write a Python function that we will ask our, our Airflow to, to run. Um, I prepared here some functions for you. And what I want to show here is how to get variables from the, from Airflow. It's very simple syntax. You just say variable get and refer it by name, right? There are other variables that I'm using here, like tag and, um, stack overflow credentials. So this is the first function. And the second function is inserting questions into database. Here, I want to show you how to use Postgres hook. Again, super simple, just Postgres hook, give it a connection ID. And uh, it has very nice uh, method, just run. And I, I give it uh, a query that I want to run, insert questions query and parameters of this query. Um, cool. So uh, yeah, this is the uh, function that we were just also notice how it's easy to use Postgres hook. You don't need to use PsychoPG, worry about the logic. Uh, now we just take this function that we created and go and create one more task in our DAG. It's using Python operator because we need to write Python uh, uh, function. And I just provide Python callable here. Super easy, nice, done second task. The third one, now we're taking data from the, uh, from the table, filter in it and, uh, storing as JSON and in, in, in S3. Uh, so here we will need Postgres connection, Postgres hook and two new things, S3 connection and S3 hook. And of course, Python operator to run it all for us. Let's look at the, uh, so the first function is actually not very important what's here. You can see I'm again using Postgres hook. Uh, and the one that we actually going to use in the DAG is write questions to S3. Here, I want to show you how to use S3 hook. Excuse me. Um, so also notice how similar it is to a uh, Postgres hook. I just need to provide connection and use specific method for this hook. Nice. Let's go and write our third task. Um, which is writing questions to S3. I just provide call a Python variable, Python callable, and it's done. Uh, the fourth one, uh, it's uh, when we're going to take data from S3 and render HTML template with this data. For ag Again, we will need S3 connection and hook. We need Python operator. And the new thing that we're going to use now is XCOM. Because I'm when, after rendering template, it's just a string. I don't want to store it anywhere. I'm just going to pass it to the next task using XCOM. And let me show you how it's done. So there's the fu last function, render template. Please notice how uh, that we use this additional context here. This context give us access to the uh, Airflow internal database, right? Um, so we can push something into this database. Uh, let's see. So uh, first we need to uh, get the task instance from the context. And then we need to push this uh, um, rendered template, which is just a value of the template and give it a key, some identifier so that the next task knows how to, uh, what to look for. So nice. Let's add this to our instructions, Python operator, provide callable and additional parameter, which is provide context true. Very exciting. Last, last, um, uh, uh, step is to send emails. Take this HTML, send emails. Um, and here we just need XCOM, uh, to get data from the previous task and email operator that knows how to send emails. Um, let's look. So here, here I'm using 
email operator. Uh, it takes parameters like uh, email, whom you want to send it. Here I created some temporary email for the purposes of this demo. And um, I need context, so provide context, yes, please. And um, it takes one more uh, uh, parameter, which is subject. Let's write some subject here. Look, I can use Jinja template in here. Uh, Airflow knows how to handle that. So DC stays for it's just like date. So my email on each date will have slightly different subject with different email and uh, HTML content. Again, I'm using Jinja templates to get task instance. This time XCOM pool and I need to say from which task I want to pull data from the previous one, render template, it's the name and the key, HTML content. Nice. So this is, this is our task that we wrote here in, um, you can see, uh, that how I define the pipeline where I say like it's all should run in, in a series. Uh, there are many other options. You can split and branch. Uh, but right now it just, just, uh, just like that. So you can see our doc is actually ready. Our pipeline is ready. It's very simple, very readable. Um, and I have also a small demo to show you how it might look like to run it. Let's see. Uh, just a second. Maybe I can make it a bit slower. Uh, no, I can't make it slower. So it will be probably fast. So this is how, how you can, uh, see your pipeline in the, in the airflow UI. So you can see how many times it's run, what's the schedule interval, what's the name, and you can also trigger it from here, which I'm going to do now. Okay. Our, uh, pipeline is running. Uh, green means it's running. It was successful. The next task is inserting questions. Um, so it's scheduled, it's running and it failed. So we can check, uh, why it failed. Uh, logs are very, uh, helpful here. So I can see that I actually misspelled a variable name. I can quickly go and fix that. And try to resume this task. Cool. So this task is cute now. It, it was successful. The next task is writing questions to S3. I actually have S3 bucket open here. So I can show you that actually on the day when I made a demo, it's, it, it added additional JSON and looks like just metadata of questions. Very nice. Now we're going to use this to render template. Let's check how other, other tasks are doing. Render template and send email done. Awesome. So, uh, I also want to show you, uh, that email actually arrived to my temporary ma mailbox, um, uh, from me questions on that day. There were only three interesting questions, uh, based on my parameters. Um, yeah. And it would be nice to get it every day. Um, Nice. So this is it. And, uh, let's sum up what we learned today. Uh, so first we learned what's, what, uh, Apache Airflow, that is the tool to build, schedule and monitor data pipelines. We learned what's the data pipeline. It's a set of data processing elements or functions where the input output of one element is the input to the next one. Also, we learned main concepts of Airflow like DAG, task, operator, XCOMS, etc. And we wrote our first data pipeline. So yeah, thank you very much. I also want to say that, um, usually in real world data pipelines are, pipelines are much more complex and much more useful. And also the, 
Airflow itself developing every day. So there are many more operators, hooks, um, um, other tools in Airflow that you might use. You also might write your own ones. Uh, also, you can set complex triggering rules. You even can trigger your DAG from your code. So there are many, many things you can do with it. I just encourage you to try it once, maybe like several times. Uh, yeah, and thank you very much for being a very nice audience. If you want to get in touch with me, here's my email. Thanks. <laughs> Right, now I have a microphone. So the my butchered introduction wasn't quite recorded, which I'm happy about. Thank you very much for the talk. It was very interesting for me uh, to see it, and I'll be certainly looking into it in the future. Now we're up to questions. We're actually five minutes early, so there's much more time for questions. Please raise your hand, and I'll just come over to you for the question. Yeah. Thank you for your talk. I have a question. How can you debug this stuff? Is only possible to go over the log logging or is there any, any possibilities? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think like logging is very helpful. Like this is usually how I do that. I, de I debug with logging or you can, of course, run it, uh, locally, right? So you, all your pipelines, you can write, uh, like run locally or using, um, um, uh, excuse me, uh, so, yeah, I, I just usually try to have some unit tests on my uh, tasks, right, or on my functions as well. Um, you can run your uh, your functions independently from the DAG, but it depends what you want to debug. If it's like failing, then logs are probably the best place to go. Um, Any other questions? I, I do have a question. Um, if some of the steps in this pipeline are computationally heavy and the result can be cached is there a way to do that uh, i'm actually don't really know about like the caching but uh computational uh, so uh, all the um your pipeline can be distributed right and uh, you also can run the tasks in parallel so on many machines so it's like very computationally heavy you might need to distribute that um, it's good to, after each task, uh, is succeeded, succeeded or finished to store the data that was outputted to somewhere. Uh, so this is what I can offer here. Yeah. Right. Uh, anyone else up for questions? <laughs> Uh, hi. Um, in your example, um, imagine if you had uh, two colleagues and um, one of them, so both are interested in those like, overflow questions, but one of them uh, would only be interested in having uh, one uh, message per day or one uh, yeah, HTML page per day and another colleague uh, in one per hour. Um, in your example, could you adapt that uh, to have the same graph, but with a different scheduling or would you end up in multiple graphs? I think you will end up with uh, multiple pipelines or maybe you can have this pipeline running and uh, like splitting and for, for it, it would stop like, uh, for, uh, for one, uh, probably a leaf, like for, for, if for one person, like if there is email operator and uh, for the next one, it will continue like running every hour. So, but I think like, I would do like two pipelines. Maybe there's a better way to do that. So uh, I would suggest to <laughs> to have to. Yeah. Um, previously, we uh, you talked about uh, distribution of tasks. Um, let's assume that I don't want to go into just a single cloud scenario. What would you su suggest to use? Uh, is that the SSH operator, I guess? Do you have any ex experience with that one? Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't have uh, experience like with 
SSH operator. Uh, and I don't really know if I understood your question. Like, what do you mean, like different clouds? And yeah, so for, for example, if I want to distribute the tasks uh, which are computation heavy among different uh, cloud scenarios. So, uh, for example, uh, if I want to exploit uh, AWS, Azure, oh, okay. uh, Google Cloud Platform, I've seen that different implementations to address uh, particular cloud platforms. But if uh, I want to be independent of that, so to avoid a vendor, vendor login, for example, uh, do you have any suggestion for that? Well, you can write your own operator mm -hmm. that will be uh, will handle all that, like, and go to all the uh, vendors that you would like. So it's it's very extensible, extensible. So you can you can just write your own okay, operator. Great. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah, I was just about to ask the other side of the room. Do you maybe have any questions? Still have five minutes. Who's? Oh, we have time for everybody. So I'll just go like. Thank you. Actually, I don't have a question, but I wanted to ask you just to scroll to the beginning so that we can note again the GitHub uh, link. Yeah, Thank sure. You. Uh -huh. hmm. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was very, very interesting. And I have a question that if you would like to have something that now is not implemented, is not in Airflow, what you would like to have? What I would like to have? Yeah, it's something that is not there. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's a tricky question <laughs> because I haven't thought about that. Uh, so um, right now I also see like that people are writing like this, for example, Postgres to Postgres operator, uh, I don't know, S3 to Postgres operator or some other like that, uh, that combine this. Uh, so you don't need to write extra Python functions and just use them. Um, so maybe like just more like that, uh, but I don't have use case for it at this moment. So I don't have ideas actually. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And tomorrow there will be a workshop, and if you are interested, you can <laughs> join. <laughs> are you doing the workshop? Yes, yes. Oh, cool. Very nice. So, I guess two more minutes, uh, guys and girls. Two more minutes, and uh, we have one, just one more question. Hi. First of all, thanks a ton. Um, I was wondering how the architecture is working. As I understand it, basically you have some server running that is executing the pipelines and the Python code is kind of a CLI that you use to add new pipelines. Um, maybe you can expand a bit on that. Um, as far as I know, so uh, the uh, yes, you need to have uh, several things deployed somewhere on the server, like uh, database, scheduler, and like web server for for the Airflow, right? And your code also. Uh, so I, I'm I, I'm not sure. Like there are many different ways you can build that, like uh, and set up, but I never done that. <laughs> so I can't give you like the definitive answer. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Is it a short one? Okay. It depends on the answer if it's a short one or not. Does it integrate with uh, Kubernetes? Yes, it is. <laughs> that was a short one. Thank you. Thank you. I think Mario deserves a round of applause for answering the question so quickly.